I declare over your life today that this is a new day for you. Your story is not over. You are just changing chapters. The best is yet to come. To come. To come. To come. Believe in his word and you'll be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. prosper, 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 prosper. Welcome to Prophetically Speaking. Greetings. God bless you. I am Michelle Cole Barnes. I want to welcome you to Perfect- Prophetically Speaking. Amen. God is doing great things and we uh, exalt his name. We give him high praise. All glory, all honor belongs to our God. We thank God for allowing us this opportunity to come and to share with you the word of God and to bring you a word of hope, a word of encouragement. Amen. Sometimes there are other things that we will share with you, but it's always in the spirit of love and with hope because Jesus is the hope of glory. And I tell you what, I believe, amen, because he lives in us, we can face tomorrow, amen. And we will face it with faith, not by fear, and we will walk by faith and not by sight. We will believe that we can do all that he said we can do, amen, that we will become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, amen, that he will be pleased with us, pleased in our living, pleased in our giving, Amen. And that when it's all said and done, we want him to say, well done. And that's that's my desire. That's the cry of my heart that I have pleased him and that I have done what he told me to do. And when it comes to speaking the word and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ or speaking into people's lives, I take that very seriously um, because I know, you know, uh, the weight of it, the weight of the mantle of the prophetic is very heavy. And I take it with a lot of responsibility. And I know that it's up to him what you see, what he reveals. But we thank him that his word is coming to pass in our lives. Amen. And that he's making us and mold us, molding us into what he would have us to be. Let's go into the word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for your word. Your word is spirit. Your words are life. Your word is health to our navel and a moral to our bone. I thank you, Lord, that your word is coming alive in the hearts of your people. I thank you, Lord, that your word is even being made flesh and dwelling among us. And we give you praise. We give you glory right now that you're opening our eyes so that we can see, open our ears so that you, we can hear what your will is concerning us, concerning the church, concerning our daily activities. And we thank you right now. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus, in us and through us and by us in the name of Jesus. Amen and praise God. We give God praise again. We want to talk to you again about Lord that we might receive our sight. Open my eyes. Amen. On the previous broadcast, we talked about calling on Jesus until you get his attention. And we talked about blind Bartimaeus. Amen. The son of Timaeus, a son of an honorable uh, man. Amen. Came from an evidently an honorable lineage, but he was bo- he was blind, and he was known by his issue. So many of us are known by the problems that we have, and sometimes people can know your problem before they know you. My Lord. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to that message, I encourage you to do so. Amen. Also, we talked about don't let. Uh, pride and people and procrastination stop you from getting his attention. Blind Bartimaeus, when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to cry out and began to cry out even louder. The more they told him to be quiet, amen, the the louder he began to cry. And I tell you, we're in a time where we have to humble ourselves and realize we need help and only he can do it. The government can't do it. Amen. We don't put our trust in everything that they're doing. We pray for them that God will lead them and give them wisdom how to lead the people, all the people. Amen. Not just your favorite group. Amen. But we pray and we realize that, you know, he's the one that will direct their steps if they're humble enough to receive uh, encouragement and instruction from him. Amen. But they can't fix the problem. And sometimes you can't fix the problem. 
but I believe we are called to solve someone's problem. Amen. To help with some issue. I believe we should be problem solvers and not problem causers. So either we're going to be a part of the solution or we continue to be a part of the problem. Amen. And we don't want to be a distraction, amen, to what God is wanting to do in this hour, um, in his kingdom, amen, and amongst his people. Amen. So don't let people stop you. Sometimes people will discourage you. They will tell you nobody cares. They don't care. Nobody have time. The enemy of your soul, the devil will tell you, amen, that you are a loser, you're a failure, you'll never overcome, you'll always uh, be a beggar, you'll always be on the side of the road instead of you being a mover and a shaker, you just have to wait till somebody have mercy on you and give you a little piece of bread. But I want you to know God is able to change your issue and your situation, amen, and, and take you from the bottom and put you on the top. He's able to take you from behind and make you the leader and not a follower. My Lord, he's able to take you, amen, from your, your place, amen, of, 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 of being at the mercy of other people, waiting on a handout instead of a hand up, amen. I do believe in giving you a hand up, amen, not just a handout. I believe God will help you to stand once you're on your feet. Amen. I believe God. I know he's able to do it. Amen. Not only that, but can you see, can you perceive without having natural sight? Can you perceive that he's in your presence? Can you perceive he's in your neighborhood? He, he's passing by. And what are you going to do? This is your chance and your moment to make your request known. Get his attention. My Lord. Uh, once you get his attention, are you going to sit there mumbling, grumbling, and complaining what so-and-so did or didn't do? My folks don't have time for me. My mama didn't love me. My daddy don't want me. They disown me. Or are you going to get straight to the point? You just imagine if you only had 30 seconds, what would you ask him for? What would you ask him for if you only had just a brief moment with the Lord? What would you ask him for? Blind Bartimaeus said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. In other words, Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. That ought to be your prayer for the whole 2021 and this entire decade. That he won't let you be fooled and deceived by the devil. Amen. That he will open your eyes and you will have an understanding of what you see. Because everything you see is not a, a what you see. That's a whole nother story. Amen. So we want to talk today about another blind man. We're going to look in John and we're going to look at chapter 9 where Jesus heals the man that was born blind. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. And starting with verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have sinned, this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh, and when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made a clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore, and washed, and came seen. Then the neighbors therefore, and they which had seen him that was blind, said, Is this not he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. In other words, it looks like him. I think it is. But the, And he said, Finally, I am he. They said uh, unto him, How was, was your eyes opened? Mm, mm, mm. Verse 11, And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me go to the pool of Siloam and washed and I went 
and washed and received my sight. My Lord, my Lord, a man called Jesus. My Lord, once again, Jesus is in transition going from one place to another. He was in Jericho, I believe, at this time, passing by. And they saw a man that was blind from his birth. So in other words, he had never seen. My God. So the disciples asked him an interesting question. They said, well, who sinned? This man or his parents why he was born this way? Why is he in this condition? Is Who sinned and caused this to happen to him? And I want to talk to some people that feel like you've been cursed or maybe you've caused this to happen to you. Uh, the reason why you are the way you are now. Sometimes it can be from that uh purpose but sometimes it's not amen sometimes you got to realize amen could it be that it's for the glory of God that you be healed that you can turn this test into a testimony your mess into a miracle my God God is able amen so Jesus answered quickly and said neither this man having sinned nor his parents but that the work of God should be made manifest. Some of the tests and some of the trials, some of the tribulations you are going through even right now is so that God can be glorified by bringing you through and bringing you out. And therefore you have the testimony. I was sick, but I was healed. I was blind, but now I can see. My Lord, my Lord. And then Jesus, after he got through talking to them, he said, I got to work the works of him that sent me. I want to talk to all the preachers and pastors, apostles and teachers and pastors that may be sitting on the sideline. You feel like nothing is happening with your ministry. Everything has changed. And I want you to know it's time for you to work the works of him that have sent you. It's time for you to get up, amen, and be about your father's business. Amen. And that is doing the works of your father. Amen. And then Jesus said, greater works shall you do. Amen. To heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers. I mean, all of these were things that Jesus did. My Lord, my Lord. So Jesus heals the man that was born blind. My Lord. And we know that there's people, amen, that have never seen. And there's some people need their vision corrected. And so they wear glasses or contacts. I've told you the story before about how I went uh, to the eye doctor after some years and I thought my eyes had changed some and I just popped in the chair and I said, oh doc, my, my eyes have changed a little. And he was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And finally he said, Miss Barnes, your eyes have changed a whole lot. And so when he started telling me, I was like, what? I was so surprised. Amen. At the results from the eye test and everything. And it let me know uh, that I was nearsighted. Well, let's talk about that real quick. Nearsighted means you're unable to see, see clearly unless things are close to you. My God. Hallelujah. Or short-sighted, some people might call it. Meaning it's blurry looking at a distance. Hallelujah. So you see, you're not, you're unable to see things unless they're right in your face, unless they're close or near to you. You also can be farsighted. Farsighted means you're unable to see clearly unless things are far away from you, but you fail to see things that are right in your face. My God, my God. Hallelujah. So you can see at a distance, but you can't see up close. My Lord, as clearly as you need to. There's different types of blindness. Uh, there's blindness where you do see some things, but because your sight, even nearsighted and farsighted, is not what it should be, you can be declared legally blind. And sometimes that's because of the, uh, the amount of light sometimes that come into the retina my lord or the optic nerve so when, when you get to talking about blindness sometimes people will be partially blind amen sometimes they see good in one eye and nothing or very little out of the other eye it can be declared legally blind and there's some people they see shadows and they still see glimmers of light but they can't see very clearly 
My Lord, my Lord. Sometimes people have cataracts on their eyes. It's a film or coating, like maybe the Apostle Paul may have had that when they said the scales fell from his eyes. My Lord, after he was blind those three days. Amen. So we, we look at how that Jesus heals this man, amen, by the pool of Salome, told him to go to the pool after he had spit on the ground and he took the mud and he made uh, the, and the clay that he made and he put it on the man's eyes. And I was laughing when I was preaching this the other week. I said, now all you nice, nasty folks, he would have lost you right there. Now you said, Jesus, now you're going to heal me. Why don't you just speak to me? Okay, Jesus, if you're going to heal me, why don't you just touch me? Okay, we could deal with that. Just touch me. But now because of the pandemic, we're not touching too many people right now. But more or less talking about somebody spit on the ground and made, uh, and made clay out of the dust in the, in, the, in the mud and put it on your eyes. And then told you to go wash in the pool of Salon. Some of us fail to follow instructions. Now, will you miss your opportunity to be healed because you're trying to tell God how to do it? Uh-oh, I'm talking to somebody. Somebody trying to tell them how to fix your problem, how to fix your issue. If you know how to fix it, we wouldn't even be talking about it. Hello? My Lord, sometimes you got to stop trying to tell them how to do it and finally just submit it to him and say, Lord, any way you do it, it's going to be all right. Lord, just do it. Just do it. Just heal me. My Lord, just make me whole. He got a prophet, uh, 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 a process to it. Amen. And in this case, the healing was a process. In this case, when he did what Jesus told him to do, he found out that he was healed. The Bible said he didn't ask Jesus no questions. He didn't, he didn't go through the, why I got to do it like this? And why you didn't do me like you did this other man? I heard you just spoke. I heard you just told him to go and the man's eyes was open immediately. But you know what this man did? He was smart enough and wise enough to say, I'm not asking no question. The Bible said immediately he went to the pool of Salaam and he washed like Jesus told him. And when he washed, he got his sight. My Lord, immediately his eyes was open and he could see things clearly. My Lord, I was blind, but now I see. Can you imagine the testimony of this man who, all, who again had to rely on other people leading him around, had to rely on other people helping him, had to rely on people leading him to, to be beside the road begging and asking for help. My Lord, and now you are able to get it yourself. My Lord, my Lord. So when the people heard and seen, say, now, ain't that that fella that be on the side of the road every day? Yeah, that child, that look like him. No, I don't know, but it do look like him. He was blind the last time I saw him. My Lord, you know, some people want to beat you telling your story. <laughs> but this time, give them something good to talk about. And, they, and he said, well, I am he. He admitted it was him who was blind. But now I see. They said, well, how, how is it that you can see us now? Now, what, what happened? They wanted to know the story. And he said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes. And he told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and I washed and I received my sight. My, 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 my. I received my sight. How many of you are glad that you can receive your sight? Amen. Whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, he can open your eyes so that you can see. Open the eyes of your understanding that you can perceive correctly. You know, because uh, when I was talking about me going to the eye doctor and realized that there, that there were certain things uh, that was causing me uh, not to see as clearly as I needed to. And when I got those glasses, I was like, my Lord. Woo, thank you for protecting me. Thank you for covering me. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Because you realize you wasn't seeing everything as clear and sharp or as close upon you or far away as you needed them to. My Lord. So when I got those glasses and I put them on, everything, I mean, just looks so different. My Lord, and I thank the Lord. Hallelujah. So now we have Jesus. He have healed a man by just speaking. Now he's healed this man 
by spitting on the ground, making some clay, putting it on his eyes and told him to go wash. Now you say, oh, but why he had to do that? He could have just, listen, you the one need a miracle. You the one need the yoke destroyed. Now, how you gonna fuss about the process instead of you just being obedient, huh? Why don't we just submit, submit to the will of God. Stop trying to be proud and cute. This man, I don't think he cared about that. All he wanted to do was to see, just to see again. My Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. So look at this. I got a few points I, I want us to talk about. My Lord. Jesus uh, also uh, said in Mark 8 and 18, having eyes, but you yet don't see. Have ears, and you yet can't hear. My Lord, my Lord. The disciples followed Jesus, and sometimes they were nearsighted. My Lord. So they can see much clearer uh, uh, about who he is and why he even came to earth. What was his point? What was his purpose? Why was he here? And when we come to him, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you seeking him? for your healing? Are you standing in the gap for your family? Maybe it's your community. Maybe you have a burden for the nation. Hallelujah. Or areas around the world. My Lord. Sometimes physical healing and spiritual healing and growth and maturity can be a process. Hallelujah. Many times when Jesus healed, it was instantaneous. It was a miracle. But then there were some people that were healed as they went. My Lord. But at this point, you done been in this condition and I'm saying, Lord, I'm not trying to tell you how to do it. I, I just want to be healed. I want to be made whole. I want to be blessed. I want I want you to take, amen, the heaviness off of me. I want to get rid of the garment of heaviness and I want to put on a garment of praise. I want to be thankful unto you and I want to bless your name for the Lord is good. The Lord is good. My Lord, and you can give him praise and you're not ashamed to tell your story for the glory of God, that God did it. Everything that happened to me, that was good. God, the Lord did it. He did it. Amen. Amen. So I want you to know that sometimes your vision can be distorted. Means Distort means to misrepresent and to not truly represent the facts or reality so that it's wrong. So when it's distorted, it, it's really wrong. It, it's looking like it might be right, but uh, something about this is not true. It's not re real reality. I'm not talking about alternative facts. Amen. I'm talking about distortion. My Lord. And sometimes uh, we can have things that are just an illusion or just a delusion. Hello? My God. My God. But we want the Lord to open our eyes that we can see, open our understanding to give us wisdom, even how to handle sometime what we see. I remember one time I had a dream and it was very disturbing about a situation I was in. And when he showed it to me, I, then I had to pray, Lord, help me to deal with what I see. Uh, man, because sometimes when you find out somebody's deceiving you or or you're in a dangerous uh, position, sometimes you don't know how to handle it, my Lord. But you can ask him to help you to deal with what you see and give you wisdom and instruction how to handle the situation. Amen. But I want you to focus on Jesus. Don't lose your focus. I want to talk about distraction. My Lord, some of us are so easily distracted. We get off track real easy. We done lost focus of the job and the mandate. Amen. And the mantle that's been put upon us. Amen. Or the gifts that we have. Amen. So we want to not be distracted. Amen. Also want to encourage you, don't be discouraged. Amen. I know you're tired of your issue. You're tired of this situation. Maybe it's a loved one. And it seems like they never going to get healed, never going to get saved, never going to get a breakthrough. But I dare you to keep on bringing them to Jesus. Amen. He's able. Don't let your discouragement stop you from seeing Jesus. Don't let it stop you from getting his attention or receiving your breakthrough. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Distorted. Is your vision distorted where you think you're seeing something, 
but it's really not what you think you see. My Lord, do you see what's really going on? What's going on in the world? What's going on in your home? What's going on in your finance? Hallelujah. What's going on with your health, your mental health? Hallelujah. What's going on? What's the real problem? What's the real issue? Are you talking about a problem or the problem? Hello? My Lord, many times we're talking about the fruit of a thing when we need to get down to the root of the matter. Hallelujah. Or are you in denial? Woo, Jesus. That's enough right there. Are you seeing what you want to see, which is a delusion? Mm -mm -mm. Or are you seeing an illusion? It's, it's like a magical appearance, but I promise you it ain't what you think it is. Sometime you may be in the desert and you're seeing a mirage and you're seeing all oh, a beautiful pool of water because you're so thirsty. And when you and when when you get to reaching out for that good glass of cold tea, you realize it's something nothing but a handful of sand. My Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's an illusion. It's a mirage. It's not real. So you said, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see, Lord. Help me to see an illusion, a false belief that persists despite the true evidence. Oh, help us, God. My Lord, it's a trick of the eye. My Lord, do you know that the devil is a deceiver? My Lord, he wants you to believe a lie rather than the truth. My Lord. But if you keep on wanting to believe that lie, the Bible said he will send you a strong delusion. Which means it looked true, but it's not true. It's not based in reality or fact because you refuse to believe the truth. Amen. So we want him to open our eyes. We want to receive our sight. We want to have insight. Hindsight. When I look back, I can I gain wisdom from what I've been through. Hallelujah. Foresight. I got wisdom enough to know how to handle myself and I can see problems before they get to me. And then insight. I need insight for what I'm dealing with right now. Lord, I need hindsight, foresight, and insight. My Lord, did y'all get that? Amen. Hallelujah. But now I can see clearly. My Lord, I'm free to follow Jesus. Where, where is the change? How dare we get that close to Jesus and we remain the same? Don't remain the same when you come into his presence. My Lord, how dare we say we have been in the presence of the almighty God and we still got a funky attitude. My Lord, we still got a nasty disposition. My Lord, yet we say we love the Lord and we can't stand our brother. Oh, can you see yourself the way you really are? My Lord, and the way he sees you. Can you see other people through love and compassion and mercy? He said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. My Lord, some of us need the scales to fall off our eyes so that we can see. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this word be bound to our mind and heart that will be in forever remembrance of your word. We thank you, O oh God, that you are touching our eyes. And as we wash and are made clean, you're opening our eyes that we may see. You are washing us with the water of your word. And I thank you, Lord, that you are opening our eyes, that you're giving us foresight. We can see it a long time before it comes. We're having hindsight. We can gain wisdom from what we've been through. And you're giving us insight right now to know what you would have us to do in the situation we're in right now. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. And open our eyes so that we may see. And give us wisdom and understanding and help us to accept the truth. And let the truth set us free. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the thanks right now for opening our eyes. We thank you right now for restoring our vision, opening our understanding, giving us wisdom and knowledge to go in and out before your people. And we thank you for it right now, and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Come on and thank him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's able. Hallelujah. To deliver, to heal, and to set free. My Lord, believe the Lord. It said, believe his word, you'll be established. And believe his prophets, and you'll prosper. This is Prophetically Speaking. God bless you. And may the Lord open your eyes.